lives and form our lives. Um, the basic principle, again, is that the nature of the Atma is that it, part of its nature is that it lends itself to nurture. So if we're nurtured by the material environment, by the Maya Shakti, then we're going to get um, we're going to have a physical and a bio biological and a psychological aspect to our embodiment and that psychological aspect a division of that is the chitta and on the chitta is where the impressions come from our associations and so forth and then they, they inform our, our actions, mm -hmm. uh, largely. And it is, it, it's, it's the same term, of course, some scars is used, and I've cited it uh, earlier, for describing the position or the situation of the eternal associates of Krishna the ragatmikas, whose atma is as rag, inborn. So another way of saying that uh, uh, is how Chakravartitapu <coughs> Shibishvanath has invoking the term samskar, anadi siddha samskars. Anadi means without any beginning. Some scar is an impression, so naturally, normally we would think an impression is something that comes from outside and impresses itself upon us. But here he says that these associates of Krishna have impressions that are perfect cities, perfect impressions that have no uh, beginning that uh, uh, drive their, their bhakti. <clears throat> and of course, rag bhakti means to follow those associates. And by following them, then that, that they being the ideal in different bhavas, um, then impressions that, that drive their lives come into our lives, right? These are sometimes we refer to them as um, um, spiritual impressions. Bhakti samskars, samskar for bhakti. So the interesting thing is, to me at least, that if we speak about the high ideal of rag bhakti and um, point to the embodiments of the uh, various bhavas that are eternal, you know, the Sakya Bhav, Madhurya Bhav, for example, Sridham, Sudham, Alitikishaka. Um, it's such a high idea to follow in their footsteps and to attain that ideal. And it's very interesting to think of them in terms of this term, anadi siddha samskars. Their, their, their lives, their service, their love for Krishna is informed by beginningless, perfect uh, spiritual impressions. Constitute of Sakya or Madhuri, as may be the case. Right? And so this is brought to the fore, and, and for the Raghunga Bhakta, and uh, the Bhagavatam, therefore, as I say, showcases these sentiments in several chapters. Several chapters put together all about Patsali Bhav and Adamadar Leela related chapters, the Sakya Rasa Center, as I've said, the Madhuri Rasa Center, the Raspanchajaya, five chapters, 
the Bhagavatam is showcasing these sentiments and that these persons uh, embody, hmm? and uh, they're driven by these perfect beginningless impressions. Hmm? So it's very high, but then to understand that properly, hmm? as I've said oftentimes, if you want to go to room 108 in the shopping mall, often they have a little map when you come in, and it says, you follow the diagram, the map, it says room 108 is over here, up here. And it also says, and you are here. So both things are there. You, where you want to go is here, you need to know that. Hmm? And you need to find out what that's about. The more you find out about that, the more you identify with that, and hopefully, <laughs> and uh, develop an attraction for that, but not at, not at the uh, cost of losing sight of where you are here, and thus how to apply yourself. And where we are here in relation to the, these ragatnikas who are moved, driven by anadi, siddha, samskar, perfect impressions for bhakti with no beginning, is that we are moving in a different orbit under the uh, material samskars. So these two samskars are meeting and there's a, there's a conflict of interest there. They're very different. They're going in opposite directions. So where here, you want to go here to the Nadi Siddha Samskars, and you are here hmm, under the influence of material samskars, therefore Mahaprabhu says what? Cheta Dharpana Marjan. It's not, it's, the beginning of rock bhakti is the same as uh, any other kind of bhakti. Hmm? That there has to be some, some cleansing of the heart. So, the, so the, our material samskars meet with the ideal of these um, spiritual impressions, bhakti samskars, that drive the lives of the uh, eternal associates of Krishna. And of course, the best way to remove the material samskars that have to get out of the way, they cannot inform our bhakti. They are the thing that we need to get rid of. It's not that I, I'm driven by certain material impressions and therefore I've got a certain personality and certain likes and dislikes, and I can look at those and say, therefore you should be a gopi, or you should be a gopa. <laughs> no, the, the, the Chaita Dharpa and Martin, skip, get rid of those, hmm? and, and deconstruct and dismantle the material persona hmm? that's uh, uh, driven by impressions that are, well, also anadi. <laughs> there, in a sense, and that karma is anadi. So from beginningless time, we're moving under material impressions, some scars, and they're deeply, deeply rooted. Um, so they're very, very powerful. Therefore, to bring these bhakti samskars, hmm, to interface with them is the most powerful way to remove them hmm, by replacing them, so to speak. Prabhupada used to, uh, there's, there's, an, there's an older example that of if you take, was it take mercury and mix it with sulfur, rub it with sulfur, you'll get gold. Something like this, an alchemist kind of alchemical perspective. It's not true. <laughs> you won't get gold. You, you find analogies like this in the scripture that over time, through observation of nature, for example, through the lens of science, may prove to be false analogies. That you, you can't mix sulfur and uh, what is it, mercury, and get gold. I don't know, anyway, it's an alchemical perspective. But while the analogy is 
proven to be incorrect in terms of the ph phenomenon it's explaining, the point that it's making is still valid. Mm -hmm. This is an important point to remember. Analogies are just ways of trying to talk about uh, subjects so that we can start to get a handle on them, think about them. Mm -hmm. they, have, they don't prove anything necessarily, but they can be useful. And, oh, and they always fall short in some respect. Mm -hmm. Still, they're, they're, they're useful, so we should, just as an aside, uh, understand this point that if the, just like there's another analogy that's famous that the, 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 is it the, the bee meditates on the, oh. the wasp meditates on yeah, the love of canto. Love of canto and turns into a butterfly yeah, yeah. or something. The, 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 the wasp. Comes a caterpillar or something. No, it can be wasp. Can be wasp anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> caterpillar becomes, becomes a wasp and so forth. Well, you know, there would, the scientific community would, you know, say, it doesn't really work like that, you know. Yeah. So, but, it, but the point is valid, hmm? that mental, in this case, preoccupation, yam yam vyapi smaram bhavam charitayam teka libra. What you meditate on, what your mind is preoccupied with, that's what you become. Just like people love one another, so the, the wife is preoccupied with the husband, the husband's, the husband's preoccupied with the wife, give it some time, they start to look like one. <laughs> it's true. Hmm? <laughs> the, uh, the physiognomy, the science of reading the mind through the physical form, is thought to be pseudo science. But I recently read a, a study hmm, from one university where they, they actually found consistent data that the emotions of people are stored in their faces <laughs> and, uh, and, and can, could be read and so forth. So, so this is an idea of the, 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 the gross matter, the physical matter, comes out of the subtle matter. Mm -hmm. We just read this morning, Krishna told the, the gopis through a letter to uh, give it to Subal, who was in the Torah, to give this to them and tell them that I appear to be here physically, but my mind is always there with you, therefore my physical appearance is only a shadow of my actual appearance, because where my mind is absorbed is where I am. Hmm? So it's very practical. At any rate, um, the example of the alchemy, Prabhupada used another example which I liked a little more, probably breaks down in some respect too, but it's a nice one with regard to Sakyaras, because he said, if you take a bottle of ink, comparing that to your material sum scars, and you pour milk in it, <laughs> could you use milk if you want to talk about the Sankhya Rasa, pour milk in it, then eventually if you keep pouring milk in it, as it starts, ink will come out, milk mixed with ink will come out, gradually only milk will come out. <laughs> Just keep pouring it, only the milk will come out. It could take a while, but... <laughs> and it will. If you take the milk of bhakti, mm -hmm. and uh, you, then you, through, uh, through sadhusanga, then you, you, you're having an interface with bhakti, through the guru parampara, through sadhus, through the angas of bhakti. Mm -hmm. And so you're getting impressions, bhakti impressions. And they are so powerful because the world of bhakti they're in the devotees, of course, under bhakti is constant of Krishna Sarup Shakti, and Krishna Sarup Shakti, as we know, overwhelms Krishna. Krishna, God is, uh, Krishna is God overwhelmed by bhakti, right? So that he's, God's becoming the son, becoming the friend, becoming the lover. So bhakti has the power to completely overwhelm Krishna. What to speak then of the power to dispel material samskaras. That would be a small thing in comparison. So you have a very powerful means to deal with the immediate problem 
of removing the samskars and you're dealing with that immediate problem by way of such a comprehensive solution because not only does it do, do away with the material samskars, but it, it, it gives uh, yeah, um, great impressions, hmm? bhakti samskars. Hmm? But anyway, it's important to see that the, you start with a high ideal, hmm? talking about the ragat because and so I want to be like that, and then, okay, good. And they're driven by an adi siddha samskars, and you're driven by an adi karma samskars. So there's this clash, so to speak. So the work at hand should be apparent. Hmm? And that, again, in Mahaprabhu's language, is take the dharpana marjana. If you want to take the, 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 the dharpana, he, he compared, compared the chitta. It's a very, the chitta is the mahatattva in a microcosmic appearance within each of us. Mahatap is material nature in, the, uh, in terms of its first being touched by consciousness. The subtlest form of the material nature, touched by, by, the, by proximity of consciousness, or just by the nature of consciousness. I mean, touch again is not a physical touch because Consciousness is not physical, right? So the example is given of Vishnu doesn't touch it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't touch her. Mm -hmm. But he looks at her. Mm -hmm. Said in the Bible, if you look at a lady with lust, you're, you, you've gone there already. It's, it's already happened. I've heard it, I never read it, but that's an accurate quote. But So Vishnu never goes concert with Maya, but he looks at her anyway, he can't ignore her altogether. <laughs> After all, she's doing some service for him, which she's embarrassed by, as the Bhagavatam says. Mm -hmm. Not only does he not consort with her, but she's a little embarrassed to come before him, mm -hmm. given her service, depicted as she is, sometimes, riding on a tiger, mm -hmm. carrying a trident, representing the, the, the threefold miseries of material existence, adhyatmic, adhibotic, adhidaivic. She's a little embarrassed by her service, but she's providing negative impetus <laughs> to move in the right direction. Hmm? Uh, so, anyway, it's, Vishnu glances at her. Hmm? And by the, in a sense, by the power of his glance, he goes there. Hmm? Goes there in the form of, uh, we call it, we call it Shambhu, Shambhu the Lingam, entering the, the, the womb of, of, of material nature. And so the world cycle begins again. Of course, we are carried in that vision, in that glance, into material nature. And so the first touch is, is what we call Mahatattva. So it's, it's, it's a luminous, uh, uh, feature or um, aspect of, of, of material nature that it's, that's consciousness-like. Because it's the subtlest form of matter in touch with consciousness. And so there's a, this is the macrocosm. And then in the, uh, comes uh, the, uh, the Bodhi, uh, Ahankar, Manas, and so forth. There's all the Antakarna. Our Antakarna is, is constituted of these four um, elements. Awareness, discrimination, uh, feeling, and identity. So let's say we hear uh, someone plays a flute. So with the chitta we become aware of the sound. With the booty, we just determine what kind of sound it is. We discriminate. It's a sound of a flute. We become aware of the sound. With the booty, we distinguish what, what the sound is. With the manas, we decide whether we like it or not. I like it and I don't like it. Sound called fluico. Hmm? And all and, and and what we like and what we don't like in one sense. In 
what our ahankar is about, our ego. So this is a subtle, subtle body, antakar. But the chitta is a microcosm of the macrocosm of the mahatattva appearing in each individual. So it's consciousness-like. Of course, it's only so because of the touch of actual consciousness. So it acts in a consciousness-like way. You know, all of our experiences, uh, qualitative experiences, all going on in the chitta. We're sitting back as atma, uh, observing. We are, of course, to be a witness. This is the Yoga Sutra's idea. The atma is only a witness not a doer, not an agent of action, just a witness. But, in, but uh, from the bhakti tradition, we have a more robust sense of the atma, in which it's a, it's a doer. It's also a, qu a qualitative experiencer. Hmm? Not, just a, not just a witness, which I guess could be a knower. Hmm? And after all, if you want to look, even extend the idea of a witness, some things only happen if someone's watching. <laughs> so, so now the witness becomes a doer, an agent of action. Um, but anyway, from the Bhakti point of view, the Atma uh, is, uh, is, is an agent of action, which makes him then it, uh, responsible. Therefore, someone may question, from the Yoga Sutra's perspective on the Atma, how can we, how can we uh, find any moral culpability if he's not doing anything? Only witnessing, but in bhakti, uh, as I say, the self is more uh, robust. It's an agent of, of action, <clears throat> and so with the chitta, then Mahaprabhu was compared it to a, but a, a, a mirror, mm -hmm. and his sankirtan to a cleansing of the mirror. So it means that the mirror of the chitta is directed towards material nature, and impressions are coming on that mirror. Mm -hmm. And we're identifying with and, and, and driven by and moving according to those impressions. And they're just innumerable. And I mean, it's just vast, deep, deep impressions. Deep, informing our actions and uh, in, in, in ways that we can't, in, we, it's practically impossible to act otherwise. So we do need a powerful method. The only way, the only way to remove these samskars, which is also the goal of yoga, stanga yoga, yoga, chitta vritti nirodha, to remove them. We are removing them in the context of, of putting new impressions on that are of a spiritual nature. Bhakti samskars. So, as you can see, as much as we, materially speaking, are a product of our environment, that means we have a nature as the Atma. And the nature of that Atma is, among other things, that it lends itself to nurture. That's what the Tatasta means. Tatasta means it could live here, it could live there, relative to the environment. It will be uh, nourished and a develop a personality, uh, a form that corresponds with, it, with its impressions and so on and so forth. Mm. If it gets the ingress of bhakti, then it can live on the other side. Have a, have a, have a bhakti constitute, bhapati, uh, constitute of sarupsha, a form, a form of love. Mm. So, um, the task is, is considerable to cleanse the samskars. Yoga, gyan, these are also, there are also 
sadhana, spiritual practice, methods for removing the sam samskaras. Hmm? Outside of these methods, they're not going to go away. Hmm? And, that, that, and that needs to, to deconstruct the ego also. It's, it's, it's not going to go away. There was a guy in, in, in America who was thought to be a mystic by some, and he was very much used to harp on destroying the ego. Hmm? So he would bring students in and humiliate them. <laughs> and he would bring their wives in and have intimacy with them in front of their husbands <laughs> to destroy the ego <laughs> of the husband. I mean, it's just clueless. It's, just, it's not as by some psychological maneuver you're going to destroy the ahankar. You need a spiritual practice. And really, yoga and jnana are kind of quasi-spiritual practices. I mean, they, they are articulated in the sacred texts, but if we study them carefully, like you study carefully yoga sutras, you, you can't avoid this ishwar pranidhan, submission to the ishwar, some subtle form of bhakti. Um, even karma, the Varnashram, I said, it's got a little bhakti in it because you worship all the gods. Vishnu is one of them. So a little bhakti, that makes it efficacious, makes it work. Mm. Ishwar Pranidhan is what really makes the yoga work. Mm. Uh, and jnana can only be effective because jnana is governed by sattva mm. You could say yoga is as well as a spiritual discipline. Karma is governed by Rajaku, and these cannot give transcendence. So they have some power hmm, to destroy these material samskars, hmm, but really only as much, in one sense, as, 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 as uh, there's inverse of bhakti along with them. At least, maybe Gyan, maybe you can destroy the samskars, but, but to actually take one to mukti, that requires bhakti. So, here we have the, the, the most powerful form of bhakti. Why is it most powerful? Because, well, it's, it's causing Bhagwan to act, to, to be a plaything in your hand. Hmm? It's not like, I love you, Narayan, home, you know. Let's come over here, Arjun said. Taxi! Take me up. Senayor, mayor, madhe, atam me. You may be a chuta, but you're my taxi <laughs> right now. You're my driver. Bring the chariot. Bring it. Let's see who's assembled here on the army in the battlefield. Hmm? So this is a very powerful, powerful um, means. Therefore, therefore, as I said before, central to rock bhakti is this ideal that I want to become. A, a, a resident of Braj. I want to become a friend of Krishna. I want to become the handmaiden of Radha. I have to know where I am at so that I know how to get there. But I have to have the idea. And having the idea itself is very, very powerful because that idea is startling to Krishna. You can startle Krishna by having this idea. What? You think like that? Hmm? He said it to the gopis in Kurukshetra. He said, you know, people approach me for all kinds of things. Or they approach me for eternal life. Hmm? But what you, how you're approaching me, that's entirely different. Hmm? And while people approach me for things, or to get away from things, and get mukti, your approach has me wanting something from you, wanting your company. All I can give you in return is the statement that I, I, I want your company. That's all I can give you. This is very extraordinary. Right? So everybody wants something from God. Here's a situation where God wants something from you. He says, this is what turns me on. Hmm? 
yeah, you can't chant the Vedas. But when my mother calls me and chastises me for being late for something, it's more, it's, it's, I find it to be nectar to my ears compared to the, the psalms of the, of the Veda, the hymns of the Veda. When my friends challenge me and say, who do you think you are? You're not a big man. And they wrestle me to the ground. So this gives me more pleasure than, and so on. And when my lover won't allow me even to come in their presence, upset with me, this, uh, this, this is who I am. Hmm? Point being that who wants to go there wants nothing. I mean, get your chai now. <laughs> nothing. Hmm? We don't want any. I don't want anything. I don't want anything. Hmm? And in the context of bhakti, then Krishna wants, if that Swarup Shakti comes to you, which bhakti is constituted of, which he does through the medium of sadhu sangha, what is Krishna's position? Hmm? Wherever bhakti goes, Krishna follows. He goes right behind. So if bhakti comes to you through sadhu sangha, Krishna has to come to you. He cannot avoid it. <laughs> he has to come to you. And what does he want from you? He wants the bhakti that you have. <laughs> he wants to taste bhakti coming through you now. Oh, he ta he, that is what he is. He's a taster of bhakti. Hmm? And you say, it's not quite ripe yet. <laughs> not quite done yet. <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> More bhakti here. <laughs> so he's driven by bhakti, therefore, in general, and of course in the person of Krishna, hmm, this is the full measure of being overwhelmed by bhakti. Uh, yeah, we were talking the other night about the spectrum, like from Mahavishnu to Krishna. Mahavishnu is sleeping half the time and Krishna practically never goes to bed. What's keeping Krishna awake and keeping him moving is the measure of bhakti, the extent to which the Sarup Shakti is present and active. How much the Srupa Shakti is active in the, in the life of Mahavishnu compared to Krishna? Talk about Leelas. What are the Leelas of Narayan? You could name a few. I mean, okay. In the Paravyo, you'd come up empty handed practically. You can only think of Jaivija. Narayan came out, said something. Of course, there's Varaha, there's Nasrinda, his avatars, hmm? Vaman in this world. They're Asankhya, but uncountable, but Krishna is a fountain of Leela. Hmm? Leela, Leela, he, therefore he's called what? Leela Purushottam. It's not the name of Narayan. Krishna's called Leela Purushottam. He's the Uttam Purusha when it comes to Leela, to play. We've given an example before that this is one way in which we ascertain that Krishna is the most powerful uh, manifestation of the Godhead. Because if you want to play, you have to have some power. Just like if you want to take a vacation, you have to have some power with the company to get a day off. You have to have some power in the form of money in the bank. Now you can spend it. It's expendable. I still have enough for my maintenance. I can take a little bit more and come to Poland for the retreat and play. It's my play money. This the trick, of course, is to use the, all our play money for bhakti. Then you can play. You have to pay to play. <laughs> so, 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 point is what? He who is only playing, that's Krishna. Krishna is not even concerned in, in, in Swayam Bhagavan with establishing the, the Dharma. Krishna, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami tells us that it's the Vishnu in Krishna 
food establishes the Dharma, but Krishna himself is only playing, therefore he must be all powerful. All he does is play. Hmm? And playing under the influence of Visarup Shakti, Bhakti. So if that power, that Shakti comes within us, what is the power to deal with material samskaras? It's considerable. Even though it may seem to be taking a long time for you, you're not fully acquainted with where you are, <laughs> as I said, on the map, and how much we're influenced by some scars from a time immemorial, materially speaking, life after life after life. So the mirror of the chitta that Babu was talking about, it's got a fair amount of dust on it, it's pretty thick. So, so just, anyway, the point being is, as that mirror is cleansed by bhakti, rather than by yoga sadhana or gyan or something like this. Hmm? I mean, what is the power of nishkam karma, karma, karma yoga to, to cleanse the samskar compared to bhakti? It's, I mean, it's very abstract anyway. How you will do it, do it and give up the results. <laughs> I mean, but, Bhakti is a simple right. You just give yourself to Krishna. Put yourself in his hands and, and, and do bhakti. At any rate, <clears throat> when you cleanse the mirror of the mind, if you will, of the chitta with bhakti, you're getting rid of the material impressions, but the impression of Krishna is coming on the chitta. At a certain point, Mahaprabhu in his Shikshasakam describes the result of cleansing that mirror. Hmm? It doesn't stop with just cleansing it and you've got a blank mirror because now Krishna's on the mirror. So he describes it as what? Shreya Kairava Chandrika Bhutarana. Like moonbeams of bhakti coming and, 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 and so the picture of, of Krishna an attachment to bhakti, attachment to the object of bhakti that corresponds, if it's sakya bhakti, that picture of Krishna, it's Madhuri, that picture of Krishna, mm -hmm. start to come on the jitta. So you're forming this way a whole different and spiritual um, personality. Now, the question is, it is said that in material, our material sojourn, we're doing sadhana, and if we attain sarup siddhi in this life, then uh, that means stepping into this spiritual um, identity, having cleansed all these material samskars and so forth. I mean, uh, it's said that you have to take birth in the Leela. Jiva Goswami says that really to attain preem, you have to get bhava, take birth anywhere, somewhere, and then again bhava. <laughs> because this Prem and bhakti rasa, bhakti rasa is very in intense, very intense. It, 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 so it's the it's the, the condensation of the of the bhava. So he says you will get bhava in, in one life, then you will take birth again as a bhava bhakta. Mm -hmm. Again another life, starting out as a bhava bhakta, not too bad. <laughs> With that bhakta, that bhava requires. You see, in other schools of, of uh, transcendental uh, pursuit, other transcendentalists, this cleansing of the mirror of the mind, that's the whole thing. Chitta Vritti Niroda, this is the whole goal of yoga. That's it, it's done. You've cleansed the material samskars. Then you sit there. <laughs> Witness the beatific vision, ultimately. It's possible to attain Shantarasa in that way. Um, yeah, but um, what was the point? But in bhakti, hmm? because, uh, in yoga, only we can sit and remove the samskaras, but in bhakti, what was the point? Yeah, I was making a nice point. No, this is good. Bhava and Brahma, this is Sandrananda. Yes, so the point is that. The reason, if if you uh, if you come, let's say, anartha nivritti, it's the end of this karma because that's kind of like the 
and it, it ends there. Yeah. Hmm? When the material, when the karma is eradicated for the Gyan and the Jiva Mukta, that's it. Then, he, then, he, then the Parabdha, at a certain point, he stops continuing the karma and through sadhana does away with the material samskars and then the remaining Parabdha karma is a witness to and it plays itself out and finished. But in bhakti, we have this whole stage of bhava bhakti, where Krishna keeps the sadhaka in this world. One who's at that point, by comparison to other traditions, is fully qualified to be a mukta. But Krishna keeps him here, in this world, to cultivate the bhava. Cultivate the, the, the add-on, so to speak, the positive side of bhakti. So there's some work to be done there. The immediate work is to cleanse the heart. I've given an example of an interior decorator. So if you hire somebody to come and decorate your house, they come in and start taking pictures off the wall and throwing things out and so forth first. And you say, I thought you were going to decorate the place. You're making a mess. <laughs> No, that's the garbage. <laughs> Throw that all out. Hmm? So there's a lot of work to be done. But then the work of beautifying is, is, is considerable also. Also. Hmm? So while you're cleansing, you're also beautifying hmm? slightly. Hmm? You're developing a tendency for bhakti. Hmm? And you're developing knowledge about your ideal, which enables you to make it that much more your ideal, hmm? by understanding it theoretically and so forth. But when you come to bhava bhakti, now it's like all about decoration. And it, 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 in ruchi and asakti, it's like, what do you think? Put it here. Picture on that wall. I don't know, I think I like it over here. And Guru Dave may say, maybe not there, but what about here? <laughs> well, yeah, that does look nice. <laughs> so, uh, or, or even in the, in, the, in the inner culture, then you may ask a question. I, I had this get confirmation and so forth, but there's much work to be done in the decorating stage. Hmm? Much work. So, Baba Bhakti is all about this. Hmm? And, and according to the Goswami, it may take a couple of lives. The only point there is that it's, there's a lot to do there. Hmm? There's a lot to do to turn Bhava into Prem. You got a ray of the son of Prem. You got a ray. Hold on to that. Hmm? Hold on to it. Keep it inside. Hmm? Keep it inside and cultivate it. Be careful that it does like a light, like a candle that doesn't blow out. Hmm? Does it get blown out? Be very careful. Keep it. You're trying to turn a ray of the sun. You're going to try to ride the ray of the sun into the sun. Become the sun. How different is a ray of the sun and the sun? They're, they're similar, but they're quite different, right? How intense is brain then? If Bob is but a ray of the sun, of brain. How intense is that brain? It has to be so intense to have the power as it does to overwhelm Krishna. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, it said, you will attain bhava and then have another life born as a bhava bhakta. Mm -hmm. It's like Prabhupada talked about himself like that. Mm -hmm. He asked about his previous life, he said, I don't know, but uh, the Gita says mm, that if you're born in a, in a family, in a devotee family, then you were practicing in your last life, and not quite perfect. So, I was born in such a family, uh, my father was a great devotee, Vaishnava family, connected with Udharam Dutta, and the powerful dispensation of the Dinanda Prabhu, and, and that, uh, area of Bengal, the mercantile community. Hmm? 
we used to go as children to honor Udaran Dutta Ji and his, his Thakurs. And I met the great Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur to augment my Sakya, mix it with Madhuri. <laughs> this is how he thought about himself. Hmm? I mean, I'm going in a little more detail than what he said, but, but uh, uh, so then they said, I mean, uh, I don't want to make this as, uh, in detail a definitive statement about Prabhupada as much as I want to say that uh, he considered himself a sadhana siddha and repeatedly, repeatedly he said that about himself. Hmm? So we go with what he says. Hmm. Not a bad thing. <laughs> and as he used to say, siddha means siddha. Whether it's kripa siddha, like Agasura, whether it's sadhana siddha, hitya siddha, siddha means siddha. Hmm? So, but the general course, as I said, you could attain bhava, take birth as a bhava bhakta, and then this bhava is fully developed, Surup city, then take birth in, in Krishna Leela, wherever Krishna Leela is being, uh, is, is manifest in, in the material world. Some, some universe over here or over here, they're all around us, it's, it's thought. Hmm. And so the question is, once you, <laughs> once you enter there, mm -hmm. then uh, is the reason that you have to enter there, rather than going directly to the Aprakat Lila, to Goloka? Because when Prakat Lila, it's the manifesting, but it means like shining also. It stands out in this dark world. Mm -hmm. When following it, then it enfolds back right into Golok. So the devotees go there to the Aprakat Leela. So the question is that is one of the reasons that we have to take birth in the Prakat Leela before going into Aprakat Leela because we need to get some scars from the social environment of the Braj that uh, fully inform us and, and sort of our personality and um, make us uh, uh, suitable for participating in the Leela. Mm -hmm. And um, well the answer to that is that um, Vishwanath Chakrati Thakur has stated in Ujjwal Nilmani in his commentary that there are aspects, there, are, there is an intensification of the stai bhav that we find basic stais like sakya, rati, madhuri rati, matsali rati, dasya rati. The, of course, sakya, but Sali and Madhuri, these are all for, for Braj, right? Um, so, it's, it's not in, in Baikuntha. So, to, the, these basic styles are further enhanced and developed through stages like um, Prem, Pranay, Rag, Anurag, Prem Pranayman Rag, Anurag Mahabhav. And so depending on the rasa, it will go up to a certain extent or they'll be arranged in certain ways. For example, if you want to pursue Madhuri Rasa, first you'll get Prem, then um, Sneha, Pranay, this is Rag, Man, Sneha, Sneha, uh, Pranay, Man, Rag, Anurag, Mahabhav. If you're a follower of Radha's group, have you cultivating this uh, Sakya Bhav? First you'll get Pranay, 
Then you get praying. Then sneha. Then um, rag. And if you pray in Armasaka, then sneha. Prem, sneha. Mm. Uh, ma, man, according to Jiva Sami. Rag, Anurag, Mahabhav. Slightly different kind of Mahabhav. So there are different types of Mahabhav. So anyway, this is all part of the uh, full, fully developed style, which is the defining emotion. It defines us. Just like uh, in relation to your friends, it's their friendship that defines you as the as the person, he's the, that person is my friend. I relate to him in a certain way, or he's my, she's my lover, or relate to her in a particular way. So it's the defining emotion, right? So that the refining of this, Vishwanath Chakri Thakur says, is not possible without the hands-on association of those whose sty is so developed, which is the, amongst the Nityasiddhas, so we need their company. Mm -hmm. And then in that Prakat Leela, it will develop mm -hmm. in their association. Just like we find some of the gopis, they couldn't meet Krishna at night when he played the flute. Mm -hmm. The implication is that there, as yet that, that development of the sty had not been completed, mm -hmm. was in progress. And not being able to go caused this separation that made their hearts grow fonder and this development ensued or, or, or followed. Hmm? So this is the purpose then, of taking birth in the breast leader to refine this daiva, whether you would refer to that as developing bhakti samskars and sensibilities, uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, I would describe it just like I did. Mm -hmm. The idea, of course, is something like this. I've given this example before. Maybe this will help us to appreciate it. In, I don't know how it works in this country, but in the United States, we have professional sports teams. Mm -hmm. So the professional sports teams get new members from the college teams. Mm -hmm. And so there are thousands of people that play college football, mm -hmm. American football. <laughs> And, uh, and out of them, then they, they have a draft where they draft the best members of the college teams. Mm -hmm. So the best members of the college teams then become members of the professional teams. And now, previously they were in college and they were the best in the group and now they're in a group where everybody's best. <laughs> so the play, the nature of the play is, is much faster. It's at a faster pace. Mm -hmm. And even the best people in the college are used to playing at a, at a slower pace, and, and so they have to get up to speed. <coughs> and the only way that they can get up to speed is to get in there and play. And they might make a couple of mistakes and so forth and so on. But they have to have that association. They have to be in that environment. And then they, they can fully participate and be a professional. Mm -hmm. So here we are as sadhakas. And we may say, oh, he's such a great devotee. Mm -hmm. And comparatively, he may be. And then he's going to take birth in the Leela, and he's going to be, and everybody's great. <laughs> oh, what an advantage, seriously, to have such association. That's a beautiful thing that, uh, that Jiva Goswami says at the onset of each of his Sandarbhas, pays his respects to Rupa and Sanatana, who are famous in Mathura. So I always took it to be like, wow. It's one thing to be a famous devotee, but to be a famous devotee in Mathura. So like to use that football example, the best of the college goes to the professionals, 
And then some of them become the best of the professionals. And they enter into the Hall of Fame. They have a Hall of Fame. So they get enshrined there, some settle ceremony and they have a voting and everything, who's the best of the best. Uh, and he, he had this many runs and touches and kicks and so forth and, uh, and so forth. So Rupa Goswami is not the, they're like in the hall of fame of Bhakti in Braj, something like that. And, and our, we, we get in the, their association through Guru Parampara. They're the founders of our how fortunate we are, how lucky we are, how humble we should feel, how proud we should be to be a humble member of this um, merciful opportunity that's come before us. And to understand that this is a task, to understand that we might, goodness, I just won the lottery here. Mm -hmm. but, but I've taken the ticket. Threw it away. I didn't know what it was. I, oh, what's this? Where's that? <laughs> You're here in the class. You got to find the ticket. <laughs> I got to do this. <laughs> Apply myself. Something like that. It's important. <laughs> so uh, that's my response to that. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Follow up on that? Uh, yes. I would like to relate to an uh, example. The example you gave about uh, the spiritual world and the, the like, uh, maybe not exactly the spiritual world, but the best players and good teams, like professional ones. So what's the spirit? Is it like team effort for serving Radha Krishna? Or is it like rather, because as far as I know here, um, those professional teams are like, they've got some stars among themselves like the best players, best players of the years, but this is more team effort and then, than just uh, some individual. individual one. And how, is, how does it relate to to spiritual world? Is it like more team all effort? The, all analogies are... Faulty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will translate, yes? Yeah. Więc ja zapytałem Guru Maharaja, jak gdyby... No właśnie, jak, jak ten przykład odnoszący się do zawodowych drużyn, czy to futbolu amerykańskiego, czy piłki nożnej, e, ma, przekłada się na świat duchowy, dlatego że wiemy o tym, że drużyna to, to na przykład 11 piłkarzy e, i wśród nich są gwiazdy, nie wiem, strzelcy bramek, natomiast e, no jednak jest to w jakiś grupowy wysiłek. Jak to właśnie się ma do świata duchowego? But just to continue with the analogy. The best players, the best of the best players, they all say and they know, I couldn't have done it without my team. Mm -hmm. I may have been good, but the fact that I was good could only be realized in relation to it. Mm -hmm. So it is a team effort and they will, and the, those who aren't the best players, they think, why didn't I get the ball? <laughs> And, and then they, they, those are the guys that don't make it into the Hall of Fame. And that, so, yes, to be the best, it is a team effort, so you have to be part of the team. As far as the Leela goes, of course, um, it's hard to um, um, uh, imagine an aspect of the Leela without the rest of it, so it's kind of a, a composite in a team. Mm -hmm effort. So if you don't have the opposition of Vatsalya in the context of the Parakya, in the Brajalila, in the Prakatlila, then how can you have it? So this has an important role to play, or the Sakas uh, who are bringing messages and so on and so forth and causing distractions. Um, so that the elders don't figure out what's going on, that kind of thing. So. Yeah, they all feel mm -hmm. they put their team, something like that. It's not, it's not a competition with, uh, with one another. You know, Prabhupada sometimes I've talked about it in the concept of competition to please Krishna. Everyone's competing to please Krishna, so whoever pleases Krishna, then, then everybody wins, because that's what they want. 
So if I'm competing with you to please Krishna, and you please Krishna more than me, I'm happy, because that's what I wanted, to see that Krishna is pleased. Right. Anything else? Yes. Uh, he, he said, Maharaj said, it is very important to know where we're at and where we're heading. Yes. But uh, most of us, we are in a situation that we neither know where we're at nor where we're heading. So we like it. <laughs> and uh, in this situation, I, um, I feel that many of us, uh, we kind of tend to neglect the point, uh, like working on, on the point where we're at and being like honest with ourselves. And it seems like we commit a lot of violence to our own bodies and minds by being overly enthusiastic about uh, spiritual practice and we just like kind of get greedy to get a fast result and many of devotees they think they're going to get it in this lifetime mm -hmm. yeah and okay i think i will end my question here you want me to so, comment on that uh, yes yes maharaj powiedziałeś że ważne jest żeby wiedzieć gdzie się jest w tym punkcie swojego rozwoju się jest i dokąd się zmierza. Natomiast większość z nas e, ani nie wie dokładnie, gdzie jest, ani nie wie nawet, dokąd zmierza. E, I w, tym, w tej a, całej sytuacji często e, wartowie e, starają się skupić na tym, dokąd zmierzają w tym, w tym kierunku. Natomiast e, bardzo często zaniedbują ten aspekt e, e, jakby dowiedzenia się, gdzie się właściwie znajdują, bycia szczerym wobec siebie w tym względzie. I bardzo często zdarza się, że popełnia się, że jest się po prostu brutalnym wobec siebie, że możliwe jest też te, jakby mm, wysiłki, które się czyni w życiu duchowym, mogą mieć troszeczkę na wyrost, co skutkuje tym, że popełnia się mm, krzywdę, tak, tak, swój umysł i ciało, ciało tak mniej więcej. I think that uh, many devotees have suffered from that, but I'll be thoroughly honest with you, I think that if they listen to me, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, you're not afraid to bring that up to me, whereas you might be in other places very shy to bring that point up because they perpetuate that kind of thing. So what can be done? I mean, it's, uh, you know, like Prabhupada tried to uh, transplant this uh, uh, culture of bhakti in places that it was, um, was, was, was new to them um, and so forth. And uh, he emphasized certain points, um, understandably so. And uh, then he trusted his disciples to uh, teach it to others, other students, and so forth. And uh, and uh, there's there's work work isn't isn't done. So you kind of look at that installment, and you look at the good from that, and you look at the downside that may have come from that particular strategy or wave. And then you, then you adjust accordingly and address it. Like the prophet used to say, you're not the body. I can't imagine how many times he said that. Mm -hmm. And I say, you are the body. So, in other words, when we get initiated, we get a sadhaka deha. Mm -hmm. So you need, to, you need to take care of the sadhaka deha. Mm -hmm. You need to bring it into balance so to speak, materially. Because if you want to jump up and touch the stars, you better start with two feet on the ground instead of one foot on the ground. But it's a question of, is the power of bhakti, it's a question of looking at the power of bhakti to convert something from material, so to speak, into material, kind of like uh, a rope siddha bhakti, to assign bhakti to something and turn it into bhakti. Hmm? 
Uh, so that's that's quite an art of sadhana. Hmm? But um, you know, it said it in a simple language of Bhakti Vinod, Grihite Guloko Bhai. I saw my house turn into Goloka Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He didn't run to Radhakund and did, you know. Here I'm here. It says in Upadesh, I'm here. You should have Radhakund. Here I am. I'm here. I mean, and, and what, would be, what would be an austerity, a bodily austerity, for someone in Poland be different than some guy that brought up in the village in, in Bengal, lived in a room with eight other people and a cow, <laughs> you know? It's, you know, I mean, he, he's got some scar for that. So, you know, so now to go, what, wow, is he austere? For him, just like, that's what you do. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we were kids when I was young, uh, I joined prop, we were sleeping on, you know, wherever. And then we joined prop, but it wasn't a big thing to sleep on her floor with 30 other people next to you, you know. Um, but, uh, so you have to look at all these things and then craft a, you know, a kind of approach that um, doesn't, in the name of spiritual life, doesn't create so psychological neurosis, bad health. How is the spiritual life is supposed to bring about bad health, or, or you know, make you neurotic? Hmm? Uh, so one has to look at those things because material balance is sattvic. Hmm? If a sudra, for example, in the Varn Ashram, is engaged as a sudra, there'll be sattva. That's the idea. If a chakra is engaged as a chakra, sattva will come. If a sudra tries to act like a brahman, then you're not going to get sattva out of that. Hmm? You're not going to get the balance by which you could be a whole... It's a funny thing, but you know, the, 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 the material ego has, the hunkar has to be healthy. <laughs> right? So to speak. To, to, do, to, to do away with himself. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. Right? If he's going to go and, 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 and let's say, you know, okay, you know, what we do here is human sacrifice. So it's going to be your turn, you know. <laughs> You know, next month you're going to be on the altar. The guy's got to prepare himself, you know, for that, <laughs> so that he can do it courageously. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and, and the, 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 the idea is to see, to understand, that Bhakti has the power hmm, that you can be going in an apparent material direction hmm, if you're if you're properly like grounded so to speak, you can go and, like I said the other day, if I feel that I need, if someone feels that they need a, to be in a relationship with another human being for human intimacy in order to feel whole, hmm, and without that, they like Godi, Vaishnavism, and Bhakti, but every time they sit down to chant, they're looking who might maybe be that partner of mine <laughs> instead of looking at the deities. <laughs> or they're looking at the deities and saying, can you send me a partner? <laughs> I need help. <laughs> so this kind of distraction, then, um, I mean, you could say, are you having a problem finding a partner? Yes, I am. Then take some news. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> it's hard to get part of it. <laughs> but that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Someone asked me, how can, how can, how can the sannyasi, how, what did he say, how can the sannyasis prepare themselves, someone who wants to take sannyasi in such a way that he'll avoid falling, and then and being an embarrassment to himself and to others and so forth. And I said, well, Bhakti Vinod said, only one who has attained bhava should become a renunciate. 
problem solves the problem. <laughs> problem solved. <laughs> But there may be, of course, Bhakti Siddhanta didn't do that in this interim period, but, but then the interim thing is you've got to become educated, grounded, grounded in Shastra. This, this is what Sarvabhoma wanted to do for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, what is a 24-year-old boy that's taken sannyasa and he's beautiful? I'm attracted to him. But to speak of the ladies in the world, hmm? he's so attractive as a, as a person. The world is calling on unattractive people. So we'll come after him. I had better ground him. This should have never been done. He should have never taken sin. Anyway, but he thought, so let me ground him in Vedanta. So uh, there, there, there is something to be said for that if some young person, younger man, or whatever, someone who's woman who wants to renounce, they haven't attained the bhava, then you could, they could, they're, at the, they're going to be, that is a teaching kind of a position, it's, now you're an example, so they should be very well grounded in the teaching, mm -hmm. so that they have to speak about it, and people expect that of them, and they're capable, I mean that is, you know, might help, that's the best, your, your hope for that, mm -hmm. otherwise. Where do you attain Bob? No hurry. Like said. So, um, rather than saying, oh, you're looking for a partner, you have the problem, just take sannyas, we could say, you know, well, yeah, you know, don't be neurotic about looking for a partner. Look for one and you know, make yourself psychologically whole and so forth, because that's required, because you're going to have to give inside of a relationship, get some counseling about that or something like that and 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 that is what you need to do for bhakti hmm? so it's not like separate from your bhakti because if i need a partner in order to feel materially whole enough that i'm not just like okay I give another example a cruder example if you're starving and I say, do you want to go on Sankirtan? <laughs> I'm starving, you know, I got, I'm emaciated, you know, I'd love to. I got any prasad. <laughs> then, you know, so, so you have to feed them, right? No one would disagree with this, right? If you're too hungry, too thirsty, then you might need to go and eat and drink something, uh, even during the class, you might have to drink something. Why are you drinking something? Richard Maharaj didn't drink anything. When he heard the Bhagavatam, why are you drinking? <laughs> You're not paying attention. You're not interested enough in the subject. You could throw water on that guy. <laughs> he tells you that. You're not Sukhade, if you can say. <laughs> Sukadev didn't tell Maharaj Preacher the fast. <laughs> tell him that. That's not in the teaching. You have to fast. But you might come to that point. Hmm? Right? Of neglecting bodily necessities if you're so absorbed. Just not by it's not just a mental, intellectual thing. I should be like this. Preachit Maharaj is like that, therefore I will fast and hear the Bhagavatam for seven days, and he'll die. <laughs> you don't drink water for seven days. So this is not understanding what Sukadev was teaching, right? So bhakti, you see, bhakti is very, very subtle. It's very subtle. It's very like what we are. I mean, we are a, 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 a bhaktitva, kartitva, we're a knower, we're a doer, we're a qualitative experiencer uh, as an Atma. We're doing that in relation to the Maya Shakti. We do it in relation to the Tsurup Shakti. Hmm? Not a big difference. Krishna Lila looks like ordinary life, village life. Hmm? Therefore, it's very, it's very, therefore, Nasta Prayeshu Bhattashu Nityam Bhagavatasava. Gotta hear. Regularly to understand it's it's completely spiritual and, and at the same time 
very similar. You could be doing absolutely ordinary things and be fully engaged in bhakti. Like drinking water. Is that bhakti? Hmm? Well, if it's offered. <laughs> Something. There's nothing offered. <laughs> so, there's uh, the possibility, the distinct possibility of entering in through good association, being inspired, but then having a difficulty finding your way in there in, in terms of fully understanding it. And you, we come to bhakti from, from jnana and karma, from, from uh, bhukti and mukti, right? Pursuing things, trying to get rid of things. So you come into bhakti, and we may develop a, a, a jnana orientation of bhakti, or a karma orientation of bhakti. Rupa Goswami says, one who has adhikar for bhakti will not be too inclined towards renunciation or too inclined towards acquisition. Balanced. Hmm? But we see people come into bhakti and they, they immediately think it's all about renunciation. Hmm? And so they, they think, I'm not this body. And therefore they neglect their body in, in ways that um, are uh, contrary to their health, and then that may affect their minds, and so forth. And that's what you're talking about, right? So these uh, are, you know, I think it's kind of natural that this might have happened, and therefore it needs to be addressed. And therefore we have to look at, just like I need to drink some, I need to eat something before going to the class, I'll catch up to you later, otherwise I won't be able to pay attention, I'll be there, just give me a minute. Um, uh, or drink something, let me give you a crude example. Or I need a partner. Hmm? Or I need a son. I need a daughter. Hmm? And then I think, okay. Just like you might think, I need a certain income. Hmm? Like, Sudama Vipra's wife said, could you bring a little more? <laughs> Krishna is your friend. He's living in the palace over there. Did you guys go to school together? Did you go and ask him for a little something? <laughs> we could, you know, meet the basic, you know, we're living from paycheck to paycheck here. Yeah. So of course he went there at the behest of his wife and we got the blessing of Rukmini in his house to the palace and so forth. So, um, so if we have a deeper understanding of bhakti, good association will, of course, be essential. Then we won't have to suffer these types of um, um, conditions that you speak about: neglect of the body, which causes some bad health, and and uh, will affect your mind or psychological issues like issues of relationships so you can say I, I, I need these things and I and by having these things by having a wife for example by having a child these lifelong ambitions of mine hmm, will be fulfilled put to rest okay and now I'm as strong to do bhakti hmm? you understand hmm? therefore I look at my son my daughter hmm, is part of my bhakti. Bhakti can include all kinds of things. We can have a king who's a, who's a bhakta, right? Bharata was a king, emperor. So you can have, you can, you can, and you should love your daughter, love your wife. You know, instead of like, okay, she's my wife, but I don't love her because love is my own. <laughs> You, you know, you never like. There's a way in which these tendencies, desires, can be indulged in the context of bhakti and be satisfied so the fire of them goes out, so to speak. But so don't be afraid of the power of bhakti or think it's lacking. Hmm? Krishna says, 
sarvadharma prayaja mamekam sharanam raja ham tvam sarva papi moksha yashami masucha he says sin and come to me <laughs> <laughs> I have that power. <laughs> That's a real antinomian way of looking at it, perhaps. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I can consume everything that you, you, you do, that you need to do, so to speak, materially. Mm -hmm. If you need it to do it in order in order to pursue the the the, the ideal that you're harboring in your heart to follow one of my associates, that's like, wow. People want things for me, as I said earlier, people want me to get rid of things, but you want to be like them? Hmm? In my secret abode? Uh, and I want to give myself to you. And you need something to do that? Oh, yeah, go for that, that's fine. Hmm? So I think you have to look at it like that, then you avoid this kind of, you know, and it's just accurate, it, it, you don't end up with this, uh, Neurotic uh, take on the, on the whole affair. And Prabhupada repeatedly, you, you could see him, you could study him, uh, how his disciples would like misrepresent in ways that, that you're talking about. I mean, I'll give some simple examples. Like one of my gabbas was uh, got on a plane with Prabhupada to travel with him, and I think he was Prabhupada's assistant, and there was some Muzak plane. I think they were on Air India. Mm -hmm. And so there was some Indian, maybe classical music playing in the background or something. Like and then Prabhupada turned to him and said, very nice music. Mm -hmm. And the devotee confessed that he was thinking, Prabhupada's testing me, because music is mine. That, that's, not, that's not kirtan, that must be mine. I shouldn't be liking it. He's testing me. And then he said, after he realized that Prabhupada actually liked it. <laughs> Prabhupada, uh, like Charlie Chaplin movies. You might like SNL or something. You know, Saturday Night Live. It's, it's a little bit, can be a bit uh, Thomasic, but <laughs> that's another thing. But you have to look at it essentially. So, prop yukta hara viharasya, right? Yoga is about balance. You know, you're regulated in eating, regulated in sleeping, and what else? Recreation, recreation in Prabhupada's translation. Sometimes Prabhupada's sitting and say, let's have some fun. Then he would tell a joke. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you another story. Sitting, I wasn't there, but some of my godbrothers and gossips were sitting with Prabhupada and somebody brought some donuts. You know, like, you don't have donuts in India, but Prabhupada had heard of donuts, and they're pretty good. So Prabhupada gave Prabhupada donuts, and Prabhupada said, oh, they're donuts. And he was handing them out to the devotees, and they were eating them, eating donuts. Another devotee came in and said, Prabhupada, there's eggs in those donuts. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, we're not eating eggs, we're eating donuts. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we didn't have a lot of common sense. And we, that doesn't mean you should go eat things that have eggs in them, you know. But, but I mean, it's like, relax, will you? You know. Uh, so... Prabhupada looked at like Krishna brought us some donuts, so we're going to eat them. <laughs> so uh, Prabhupada wasn't really like that, but you know he was very busy. He wanted to write his books. He spent so much time on that, and then organizing the best that he could, and dealing with people like the, another planet, you know, trying to talk to them. And, and, and they, they, they didn't. It takes time. You take two lifetimes of bhava, right? To attain Sarup City and then take birth of Krishna Leela. So you know, be patient. <laughs> just be happy to be on you just be connected to the to the ideal. I'm not giving you a license to just relax and don't pursue. You should pursue wholeheartedly, but it requires some understanding. Otherwise otherwise you can become discouraged and think because others will say, he's in Maya. You see, he went he he he, he, he got a job. <laughs> you laugh. It was like that in Iskon in the 70s. He got a job. He didn't mind it. He's not just he's not just selling books or something instead, you know. So um, so again, the body is a sadhaka deha, so it should be used in Krishna's service. I remember when I was 
putting on t lock once in Los Angeles and I was looking in the mirror and I was thinking, hey, those gopis are looking in the mirror and they're just looking at themselves and putting dots and decorating and so and so forth. And, and, and this is it's such a different idea about doing away with vanity, mm -hmm. decorating oneself for Krishna, to please Krishna. And you can fully do all the things that the materialistic person is doing the big cosmetic industry and so forth. It's so vain. Hmm? But you can employ all of that as possible in Krishna's service. That's an incredible idea. It just speaks to the power of bhakti. Right? Take such a vain industry of bodily consciousness <laughs> and turn it into something spiritual as possible. So, does that help? Yes, your three points. All right, just up there. Gold bhakti vrindhi ke jaa. Gold premanandi.